This is an interactive sermon. This is an interactive sermon. Yes, Anthony Bourdain. The name of the designer who took her life a few weeks back. How many people were killed at the Capitol Gazette there in Annapolis? Five. Five. Terrible things that have happened just recently. Terrible things characterized by fear and death. It's a sad reality of this world. Those who took their lives perhaps were afraid of just enduring another day of suffering in this world. Perhaps in their minds they thought that in death they could find at least kind of peace because they wouldn't have to endure another day with whatever demons they were facing. There was fear for the people sitting there in the Gazette, wondering if they would be staring down the gunman, wondering if he, if he would pull the trigger on them. Fear for their families, watching all of this happen and wondering if they would get a phone call that it was their loved one who was killed. Fear and death are a reality in this world. And suicide and mass shootings, it may not be the direct theme of what we spoke about in our gospel lesson from Mark chapter 5, but in the face of fear and death, Jesus' words there in Mark 5 remain true. Do not be afraid, just believe. At this point in Mark's gospel, Jesus had been growing in fame. We read that now, whenever he came to a city, a large crowd would form. He wanted to see the, the teacher, the healer, the miracle worker. We're not surprised when we hear that Mark says, after Jesus crossed over by the sea, that a large crowd formed. We're not surprised by the crowd, but we are surprised by one person in that crowd. He was a synagogue leader named Jairus. A synagogue leader at that time would be and what we call today maybe a church president or maybe an elder in the church, a leader of, of a smaller group of believers. We're surprised that Jairus comes out of the crowd to speak with Jesus because the synagogue leaders, like the Pharisees and the scribes, the teachers of the law, a lot of the other religious leaders at the time were not fans of Jesus. The fad had not come up, caught on among them that Jesus was a rebel, that he was there to upend the religious establishment. So we're surprised to see that Jairus seeks out Jesus, and we find out why. Jairus comes out of the crowd, and he falls at Jesus' feet, and he pleads earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please, come, put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. The man's world had been turned upside down. His little daughter lay at home dying. His world had been turned upside down, so now he was willing to even go to Jesus if that meant he might help him, if it meant that his daughter might be healed. Jesus hears his plea and immediately begins to follow him. Now the two of them have to fight through this crowd, and Jairus, no doubt, is, is looking back to make sure Jesus is still following him. And as they get closer and closer to the house, his heart is, is getting lighter. Jesus said he would go. Jesus has the power to, to heal the daughter. So his fear is, is going away. Until he looks and Jesus has stopped. And Jairus' heart skips a beat as Jesus stops. He looks at the crowd and he says, Who was it that touched me? And the crowd thinks, Jesus, that there's a lot of people that are touching you. We're a huge crowd. We're all jostling together. Jesus stopped because there was a woman who had been suffering for 12 years from bleeding. She had heard about Jesus. She had already spent all of her money on the best doctors, and no one could cure her. She was destitute now and desperate. Finally, in fear, she thought, maybe Jesus might help. She hid herself in the crowd. She reached out. She thought, if I just touch Jesus' robes, then I'll be healed. She was right touched Jesus' robes, and instantly she felt that she had been healed. But Jesus stopped because he knew that the power had left him to heal her. And he stopped and he asked the crowd, who was it that touched me? She didn't come forward at first, and finally she did. Jesus, it was me. She 
She wasn't sure what he was going to say. And then Jesus looked at her. And he said, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. It was good news. But as Jairus watched all of this, his heart was beating faster and faster. He didn't want Jesus to stop. And when Jesus stopped, he saw Jesus do exactly what he needed to be done for his daughter. Jesus stopped and he healed somebody. He told her that she was free from suffering, to be at peace. This is exactly what he wanted. And then as soon as Jesus finished speaking, Jairus' worst fears came true. And some people came from his house and they said, Your daughter's dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Before they were done speaking, I'm sure Jairus had finished the sentence for them in his own mind, and his heart continued to be overwhelmed. He was probably mad that Jesus stopped, jealous that this woman had been healed in place of his own daughter, and now he was filled with a hopeless fear. What was the point now? Maybe while his daughter was alive, Jesus would have healed her, but now that she was dead, what's the point? moments like that where we have that deep seated fear that put our faith to the ultimate test Jairus was afraid that his daughter was going to die but he reached out and asked Jesus to come and heal his daughter that hope got wiped away once he heard that she was dead he didn't believe that Jesus had the power over life and death now I don't know Anthony Bourdain, I didn't know Kate Spade. I don't know the five victims, families from that shooting in Annapolis. But I do know that fear puts our faith to the test. And fear, really, if you, if you push it to its ultimate goal, is the opposite of faith. Because when you're put into a moment where you're filled with fear, it's a situation that you feel you have no power over anymore. It's a situation where you feel like you don't have the resources or the skills. There's no place you can run to. There's no person you can call out to to help you through that moment. And those kinds of fears haunt all of us. So what is that fear for you? What is that fear that threatens your faith in Jesus? Maybe the fear of public embarrassment or ridicule. Maybe the fear of rejection. Maybe the fear of being alone. Maybe the fear of losing a child. It may be fear of losing your own life. When you stop and confront your greatest fears, then you understand how Jairus felt. He heard the news that his daughter had died. And the news came so quickly, but he knew that this news would have ramifications for the rest of his life. It was something that, as far as he con was concerned, could not be undone. And the devil was there, as soon as he got that news, to have his mind chase that rabbit. To have him go so far as to doubt that God had any power there. To doubt Jesus as his Savior. To doubt Jesus had power over life and death. Jairus was overwhelmed in that moment, and he was tired to fight for his faith. But Jesus was there, and he said, don't be afraid. Just believe. As soon as he got that fearful news, Jesus knew exactly what he needed to hear. He knew the greatest need for Jairus was to hear, do not be afraid. Just believe. And not to believe that, that we tell others or that you've probably heard from somebody else. The kind of belief that, well, just pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Jairus, like, get through it. Tough it out. Or, hey, look on the bright side. You lost your daughter. You still have your wife. You still have your health. You still have your home. Look on the bright side. Maybe things will get better. 
It's not the kind of just believe that Jesus was saying. It wasn't saying believe in yourself. It wasn't saying believe that something might happen that'll make this better. It was saying believe in me, in something that's true, in something that is real. Believe that Jesus is God, that he is that same miracle worker, that he said he was going to your house to heal your daughter. Trust that he's going to follow through on that. And so Jesus went. He took his three closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, and he followed Jairus to his home. And when he got there, he found a mess, as you can imagine. A young girl had just died. So the house was all abuzz, and there were people crying and wailing loudly, and Jesus goes in and he says to them, Why? Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed at him. And some of the people there were family and friends. Others, as for the custom at the time, were actually hired on uh, to cry and wail when somebody died. Jesus walks in and he finds all these people and all this mess. And he tells them she's not dead, but asleep. He wanted them to know that Jesus had come and he was going to treat this girl as if she was only sleeping. Because for him, to wake someone up who is dead is just like when we go and wake somebody up from a nap. It's simple. It's easy. Jesus goes in despite the laughter, despite the lack of faith. He kicks all of them out of the house and he takes his, the young girl's father and mother and the disciples and he goes in. He took the young girl by the hand he says, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was only 12 years old, and all of them were completely astonished. And Jairus had experienced so many moments now where his faith was put to the test. He was afraid when his daughter first got sick. He was afraid to go and ask Jesus, not sure who he was or what he could really do. He was afraid when he saw Jesus stop in the crowd, that time was running out. He was jealous and afraid that Jesus may not be able to save his daughter now that he heard that she was dead. He was afraid when he got to the house and all the other people were laughing and didn't believe that Jesus could actually wake up his dead little girl. Finally, he had to go in the room and look at her. He knew that she was dead. He was afraid that Jesus could do nothing for him. He faced all of that. And Jesus told him to believe. Because faith is our only tool to fight against fear. Faith in Jesus, that he is the answer to our fears. He even has power over life and death. Just like Paul told us in our second lesson from 2 Timothy chapter 1, he says, Jesus has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. When Jairus was pushed to the point of losing his faith in Jesus, Jesus follows through on his promise. He came to the house, saw his little girl, and he completely healed her. Jesus has done the same for us. He came to this world. He lived. He died, just like all of us will. But he came back to life. He died to save you from your sins, to take away that punishment. And now because of him, you've already died that death to sin. So when you die, you'll be brought back to new life, to a new life in heaven, a life that will last forever, a life separated from all of the sufferings and fear that haunt us in this world. Faith is the only antidote then to fear because it is faith that rests in Jesus. And as you face those fears in your life, as you think about them, as you suffer through them, continue to put your trust in Jesus because you'll face moments like Jairus, moments that ping pong you between hope and despair, between faith and fear. But Jesus' words will remain true through all of that. And things will not work out how you want them to. 
things will not go according to your timeline, just like for Jairus. And all of your sufferings may not be taken away this side of heaven. But see, it's that hope in heaven that gets us through this life. It's hope in Jesus. Hope in that life that is coming. Hope in something that is real. Fear and loss of faith have left many people so hopeless that they lose their own lives. They choose to take someone else's life. They become so overwhelmed that they feel that hopeless, faithless despair. But Jesus' words remain true for them. They remain true for you. God hears your prayers. He knows your fears. He knows your sins, and he has taken them away in your Savior, Jesus. He knows just the right way and just the right time to help you through them. He has saved you. So his words remain true for you now and forever. Do not be afraid. Just believe in Jesus, your Savior. Amen.